the hour of convening having arrived, all members will please report to the floor of the House and take seats. All members will report to the floor of the House. The clerk will ring the bell. All members will report to the floor. All members report to the floor and take seats. We are going to have the morning roll call. All members present will please vote green to signify their presence in the chamber, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. Doorkeepers will please close the doors and keep them closed. Well, good morning. Another beautiful day in Georgia. We will begin this day with scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. Our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the gentleman from the 78th House District, Representative Demetrius Douglas. Representative Douglas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My esteemed colleagues, before I introduce our speaker of the day, I just wanted to say a few things about being ready in everything that you do. Uh, on a phone call yesterday, I was called to check on our colleague, see if he was okay, out of surgery. And I asked him these simple words, is there anything you, I can do for you? And he said, matter of fact, yes. So be careful when you ask if there's anything you can do. <laughs> You'll get put to the test right away. So I have the esteemed pleasure of introducing him today. His name is Pastor uh, Michael Jackson, was born and raised in LaGrange, Georgia. He's married to Mrs. Belinda Williams um, Jackson. I didn't mess it up right, okay. And they are proud parents of five children, eight, eight grands. He is joined by his, uh, his wife and beautiful youngest daughter and a few fl family members that's in the gallery. Will they all please stand? And mama, will you guys please stand? Will you give them a hand? Thank you. Pastor Jackson attended Cornerstone Christian University and is presently presiding, pursuing a master's degree. Uh, he is currently serving as a senior chaplain of LaGrange Police Department, serving the people, praying for our law enforcement. In September uh, 2006, he was called to be the senior pastor of Confidence Missionary Baptist Church and remains to be the shepherd of that flock. Through his leadership, the congregation continues to grow and is a light in the community. Pastor Jackson has received numerous accolades for the community service in the endeavors that he does. He is a man with a vision. Now, I present to you Pastor Jackson.
Good morning to Speaker Radisson and to my state representatives, Bob Trammell and his absent and his staff. Thanks for allowing me to share with you today, especially to my family and all who came out to support me uh, on today. A thank you to Representative Douglas for introducing me. It's, it's an honor and it is a pleasure to be standing here today. I have a scripture reading from today that I want to share with you uh, as I echo off of what Representative Douglas have shared. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he has planned us a long ago. Philippians 4 and 13 says, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. But 1 Corinthians 3 and 9 says, For we are co-laborers in God's service, and you're God's field, in God's building. Just for a few seconds, I just want to share with you uh, on a thought, making a difference. Making a difference. Barbara Malinsky said, Each one of us makes a difference, but together we make a change. John Maxwell said these words, I want to make a difference with people who want to make a difference, doing something that makes a difference. Great leaders, we're not set out to be a leader, but we're set out to make a difference. It's never about the role, but it's always about the goal. We must all realize that we've been called by God for a particular assignment and we've been equipped by God to do his will and to do his work. We're all put here on earth for a position to simply to make a difference, to make a contribution. And so as we start this 2020 session this morning, we need to make up our mind that we came here to make a difference. We're created not to just consume resources, but we're designed to make a difference. It does not matter what ethnic group we come from, what party we represent, what our religious background, but we're all God's people and we're called to make a difference. Do the work and learn to celebrate our success. I wanna share with you two things. How can, how can we make a difference? We can make a difference where the Bible says in Psalms 133 verses one, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to walk together in unity. Amos three and three says, how can we walk together? except we agree. So why should we, make a, why should we make a difference, my fellow representatives? Our world needs us. Our world depends on us. Our world would not survive if people did not help one another, and we need each other to survive. Where would the world be without good Samaritans? Secondly, why would we make a difference? We should make a difference, or we should be different makers, because God expects that of us because we're all God's children. So as we continuously move into 2020, this first day, this session, as we go into day three of this session, representatives, if we're gonna make a difference in this house, on a local level, on a state level, on a national level, we got to accept the challenges that come and make a difference and begin to move forward. Matthew 5, 13 says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its favor, where shall it be salted? People need to see a difference, a difference in our decisions, a difference in how we treat one another. Make a difference, but not only make a difference, but learn to be the difference. For 1 Corinthians 15, 38, it says, we must not resort to ungodly actions. But as I get ready to leave you, I want to leave you with something, two things that I think will help us as we continuously move forward and make a difference. Fellow representatives, we're going to make a difference. We got to move forward. We must learn to evangelize our local community. We must learn to evangelize our state community. And if we evangelize our local community, our state community, then we can evangelize the world and make a difference. Representatives, if we're going to make a difference moving forward, we got to develop future leaders. Paul invested himself in training Timothy, and Timothy was doing the same with other faithful men. 
Last, as we begin to make a difference, ultimately moving forward into the future, it involves every member of this house. The question I leave with you today, will you accept the challenge to make a difference? Will we move forward? When do we make a difference? We start today. We start now. For Philippians says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Join me as we begin to go to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you now for this day, God. We thank you for your grace and we thank you for your mercy. As we come now, God, into this session, God, we're asking that you touch everybody that's gathered. Touch every representative, God. Touch every party. Touch the uh, speaker of the house right now, God. We ask that you be with us in our decision-making, God, that we make wise decisions, God. Help us to be able to move from the past, Lord God, but to more so focus on the future, God. Help us to lay aside every weight that so easily beset us, God. As we go into another century, another decade, God, help us to move forward as our people, Lord God. Help us to move forward, Lord God, and make a difference in our community locally, nationally, regionally, and throughout the world. We thank you, God, for just being so awesome and so wonderful. And then, God, we will not leave. Ask you that you cover every speaker that's absent from this place. But we ask a special prayer for Representative Bob Trammell. We thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name, all of God's people said amen. amen. I pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the public for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Doorkeepers will unlock the doors. The chair recognizes Chairman Hogan, the chair of the Committee on Information and Audits. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Information and Audits has read the journal of the previous legislative day and found it to be correct. Chairman Hogan, the chair of the Committee on Information and Audits, reports that the journal of the previous legislative day has been read and found to be correct. Is there any objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none in the journal is confirmed. The clerk will read the resolution establishing the order of business for the day. Mr. Burns, under 59th moves following me establishes the order of business during the first part of the period unanimous consents. Introduction of bills and resolutions. First reading and reference of house bills and resolutions. Second reading of bills and resolutions. Reports of standing committees, morning orders.
Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? The chair hears none and the resolution is adopted. First reading of bills and resolutions, the clerk will read. House Bill 745 by Representative Thomas, the 56th, Cannon of the 58th, Shannon of the 84th, Kendrick of the 93rd, and Stevenson of the 90th. Bill being titled Act to amend Chapter 2A of Title 31 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated relating to the Department of Public Health. Health and Human Services. House Bill 746 by Representative Kendrick of the 93rd, Scott of the 76th, Cannon of the 58th, Thomas of the 56th, Shannon of the 84th, and others. Bill being titled Act to amend Chapter 9A of Title 31 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated relating to the Women's Right to Know Act. Health and Human Services. House Bill 758 by Representative Apollo, the 32nd Corporate of the 174th, Smith of the 133rd, Harrell of the 106th, Montahan of the 17th, and others. Bill being titled an Act to Amend Part 1 of Article 3 of Chapter 1 of Title 40, the Fiscal Code of Georgia Annotated relating to the Georgia Motor Carrier Act of 2012. Motor Vehicles. House Bill 759 by Representative Parrish of the 158th, Stevenson of the 164th, Fleming of the 121st, Welch of the 110th, Burns of the 159th. Bill being titled Act to Amend Chapter 13 and Title 16 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated relating to controlled substances. Judiciary Non Civil. House Bill 760 by Representative Cooper, the 43rd, Lumpson of the 12th, Jackson of the 128th, Hitchens of the 161st, and Green of the 151st. Bill being titled Act to Amend Chapter 3 of Title 37 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated relating to examination and treatment for mental illness. Public Safety and Homeland Security. House Bill 761 by Representative Carson, the 46th part. Parsons the 44th, Anilla Woodson the 42nd, Allen the 40th, Dickey the 140th. Bill be titled Act to Amend Title 46 of the Fish Code of Georgia Annotated relating to public utilities. Energy, Utilities, and tra Telecommunications. House Bill 762 by Representative Carson the 46th. Bill be titled Act to Amend Article 2 of Chapter 7 of Title 48 of the Fish Code of Georgia Annotated relating to the imposition rate, computation, and exemptions from state income tax. Ways and Means. House Bill 763 by Representative Jones the 25th and Caldwell the 20th. Bill be titled Act to Amend Chapter 1 of Title 10 of the Fish Code of Georgia Annotated relating to selling and other trade practices. Banks and Banking. House Bill 764 by Representative Jones the 25th, Jones of the 47th, Cantrell of the 22nd. Stovall of the 474th bill being titled an act to amend code section 20-2-2068.2 the official code of Georgia annotated relating to facilities grants for charter schools. Education. House Bill 765 by Representative Scoggins of the 14th, Gamble of the 15th, Powell of the 32nd, Benton of the 31st, and Gullet of the 19th. Bill being titled an act to amend title 15 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to courts. Judiciary. House Bill 766 by Representative Scott of the 76th, Jackson of the 64th, Mitchell of the 88th, McLean of the 100th, Douglas of the 78th, and others. Bill be titled Act to Amend Chapter 3, Title 20, the Fiscal Code of Georgia Annotated relating to post secondary education. Higher education. House Bill 767 by Representative Scott of the 76th, Williams of the 68th, Jackson of the 64th, Schofield of the 60th, and Beasley Teague of the 65th. Bill be titled Act to Amend Chapter 10 of Title 31 of the Fiscal Code of Georgia Annotated relating to vital records. Defense and Veterans Affairs. House Bill 768 by Rosa Scott of the 76, Williams 168, Jackson the 64, Schofield of the 60th, Beasley Teague the 100, of, of the 65th, and others. A bill be titled an act to amend Part 4 of Article 3 of Chapter 2 of Title 38 of the Fiscal Code of Georgia Annotated relating the rights, privileges, and prohibitions regarding military personnel. Judiciary. House Bill 769 by Representative Scott of the 76th, Williams the 168th, Jackson the 64th, Schofield the 60th, Beasley Teagues the 65th, and others. Bill being titled Act to Amend Part 1 of Article 2, Chapter 4 of Title 38 of the Fiscal Code of Georgia Annotated relating to veterans' education. Defense and Veterans' Affairs. House Bill 770 by Representative Scott of the 76th, Williams the 168th, Beasley Teague the 65th, Lanton the 75th, Hutchinson the 107th, and others. Bill being titled Act to Amend Article 1 of Chapter 4 of Title 38. The official code of Georgia annotated relating to the Department of Veterans Service. Defense and Veterans Affairs. House Bill 771 by Representative Scott of the 76th, Williams 168th, Beasley Teague the 65th, Glanton of the 75th, and Hutchinson the 107th. Bill be titled an act to amend Part 2 of Article 2 of Chapter 3 of Title 20. The official code of Georgia annotated relating to the University System of Georgia. Defense and Veterans Affairs. House Bill 772 by Representative Scott of the 76, Williams. Let's, uh, Mr. Clerk, let me go back on 771. That was higher education. 
you may proceed. Hospital 772 by Representative Scott on the 76, Williams on the 68th, Jackson the 64th, Schofield the 60th, Beasley Teague the 65th. They'll be entitled on Act to amend Chapter 3, Title 35, the official code of Georgia annotator relating the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. Defense and Veterans Affairs. House Bill 773 by Representative Turner, the 21st, Jones the 25th, and Berkeley the 155th. Bill be entitled on Act to amend Title 43, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to professions and businesses. Regulated Industries. House Bill 774 by Representative Allen of the 40th, Wilkerson of the 38th, Dreyer of the 59th, Jones of the 53rd, and Nullowitz of the 42nd, and others. The bill being titled Act to Amend Article 1 of Chapter 9 of Title 12, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to air quality. Natural Resources and Environment. House Resolution 893 by Representative Scott of the 76th and Schofield of the 60th, a re- resolution proposing an amendment to the Constitution of the State of Georgia so as to provide that persons who are at least 16 years of age may vote. Governmental Affairs. House Resolution 894 by Representative Scott of the 76th, Williams of the 168th, Schofield of the 60th, Jackson of the 64th, Beasley Teague of the 65th, and others. A resolution creating the Joint Study Committee on Veteran Suicide. Defense and Veterans Affairs. House Resolution 895 by Representative Allen of the 40th, Wilkerson of the 38th, Dreyer of the 59th, Jones of the 53rd, and the 42nd, and others. A resolution creating the jo- Joint Ethylene Oxide Study Committee. Natural Resources and Environment. That completes first readers. Second reading of bills and resolutions. The clerk will read. House Bill 751 by Representative Poland of the 131st, Cook of the 18th, Gertler of the 8th, Singleton of the 71st, Moore of the 1st, and others. A bill relating to legislative findings, preemption of local regulation, lawsuits, and exemptions. House Bill 752 by Representative Belton of the 112th, Bonner of the 72nd, Bennett of the 94th, Glanton of the 75th, Carson of the 46th, a bill relating to general provisions regarding physical therapists. House Bill 753 by Representative Nix of the 69th, a bill to authorize the governing authority of the city of Franklin to levy an excise tax. House Bill 754 by Representative Bruce of the 61st, Baysmore of the 63rd, Metz of the 55th, Jackson of the 64th, a bill relating to manufacturing, distributing, dispensing, or possessing with intent to distribute controlled substances or marijuana in, on, or within drug-free commercial zones. House Bill 755 by Representative Belton of the 112th, Jones of the 47th, Nix of the 69th, Cantrell of the 22nd, Glanton of the 75th, and others, a bill relating to charter school funding. House Bill 756 by Representative Trammell of the 132nd, Clark of the 108th, Buckner of the 137th, Williams of the 37th, Allen of the 40th, and others, a bill relating to general provisions relative to solid waste management. House Bill 757 by Representative Fleming of the 121st, Burns of the 159th, Jones of the 47th, Blackman of the 146th, Kelly of the 16th, and others, a bill relating to primaries and elections. House Resolution 880 by Representative Petrie of the 166th, Stevens of the 164th, Hitchens of the 161st, Gilliard of the 162nd, Gordon of the 163rd. Resolution honoring the life of Mr. Al St. Lawrence, dedicating a bridge in his memory. House Resolution 882 by Representative Clark of the 147th, Belton of the 112th, Bonner of the 72nd, Hitchens of the 161st, Setzler of the 35th, and others. A resolution recognizing and commending President Donald J. Trump and the brave men and women of the United States Armed, Service, Armed Forces and Intelligence Agencies on their successful military operation that neutralized Qasem Soleimani through second readers. Reports of standing committees. The clerk will read. House Bill 245 do pass. House Bill 593 do pass. House Bill 663 do pass by committee substitute. That completes the reading of the standing committees. Is that it? House will come to order. House will come to order. Members will take their seats. 
We're going on now to morning orders. Morning orders. Remembering the instructions that were given yesterday, I'm going to limit morning orders to two minutes each this morning. Chair recognizes for a morning order Representative Bill Yerda. This past December, uh, less than a month from when we lost our colleague Jay Powell, uh, we lost Senator Greg Kirk. He lost his courageous battle with cancer. Greg was a loving husband, father, and grandfather. Greg was an, a man of outstanding character and strong Christian faith. He had a passion for serving those less fortunate. He was especially interested in helping the disabled and taking care of families with disabled children. Greg also served as a pastor, leading his congregation with the wisdom as a senior pastor. Greg was also an entrepreneur in his community and worked hard to create jobs in his community. He loved Georgia. He loved Southwest Georgia. He was a real champion of rural Georgia and led, in a, a, led a variety of efforts to improve the lives of rural Georgians. He was most proud of sponsoring legislation that protects Georgians from being sued for damages if they have to break into a vehicle to save an unattended child, and what a legacy that is. Greg will be deeply missed in the General Assembly, his district, and all over the state. Greg, buddy, we'll see you on the other side. I yield the well. Chair recognizes for a morning order the Chair of the Health and Human Services Committee, Chairman Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, colleagues. Happy New Year. Today is Patient Advocacy Day here at the Georgia State Capitol. And for many years, I've had the honor of recognizing this group for the outstanding work they do on behalf of Georgia patients with their advocacy. Thank you for all of those that are here in our uh, gallery and to all that are here at the Capitol today, they will probably be calling on you. I thank them for their work. Patients should always, patients should always be at the center of any legislation that we as decision, as lawmakers make. You know, as Chairman of Health and Human Services, my goal is to protect our patients and to push for health care systems to work for them, not for large corporations and organizations that have their own self-interest at heart. Patients in Georgia deserve better uh, quality health care access, no matter what their socioeconomic background is, the color of their skin, or their zip code. This year, we will be working to build upon laws like the Patient First Act and many others to provide better health care outcomes for patients across our state. I look forward to working with all of you on these issues for better access to quality health care for all Georgians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield the well. Chair recognizes Representative Anulowitz for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and good morning. I am here today because it is Cervical Cancer Awareness Day in Georgia. We have a group of advocates who are here. I think if some of y'all are in the gallery, I would love to welcome you to the Capitol today. We are working with the Georgia Cancer Control Consortium and the Susan Jolly Awareness Program to make sure that everyone knows that today is Cervical Cancer Awareness Day. There is a lapel pin and some information on Georgia in your desk. I also want to share that um, there's also a news article about Australia in which they have just about eliminated cervical cancer because of a robust HPV vaccination program. 
So I wanted to help make everyone aware of that. Thank you so much. I yield the well. Chair recognizes Representative Silcox for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also want to uh, recognize those that are here for Cancer Awareness Day and share a couple of statistics. Um, according to the American Cancer Society, an estimated 14,000 new cases of cervical cancer will be diagnosed in 2020, and over 4,000 women will be fighting this illness um, and die by the end of this year. While these statistics are scary, um, a lot of this can be prevented with early detection. Uh, so I would encourage all women of Georgia to please see your primary care physician this year and get a pap smear, and hopefully we can eradicate cervical cancer in Georgia. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Gerald Green for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On Monday, I will celebrate it, another birthday. And that is also the holiday that we celebrate. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, the time is always right to do what is right. And today on his birthday, we remember the, the life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We remember him for his determination and his persistence to create a better world for future generations to live in. A Georgia native, Dr. King was a minister, an activist, and the most visible leader of the civil rights movement until his tragic assassination in 1968. A co-pastor of the Atlanta-based Ebenezer Baptist Church, he is known for leading the 1955 Montgomery boy bus boycott the 1962 struggle against segregation and numerous nonviolent protests across, across the country, most notably in Birmingham and Selma, Alabama. In August of 1963, he helped organize the March on Washington, where he delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech to a crowd of, rep, of roughly 250,000 onlookers. On October the 14th, 1964, he was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for combating racial inequality uh, through nonviolent resistance. As public servants, we should all strive to be more like Dr. King. And again, in his words, the time is always right to do what is right. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The chair recognizes the chairman of the Legislative and Congressional Reapportionment Committee, Chairman Rich, for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my fellow members and our guests in the gallery, January is National Blood Donor Month, which is an excellent time to celebrate the life-saving impact of uh, blood and platelet donors and to host a blood drive. We are currently hosting a blood drive as I speak in a blood mobile between the CLOB and the Capitol. They will be there until two o'clock. If you have not made an appointment, you can still show up and give blood. While at Georgia State University, I gave regularly because it was easy. The law school hosted a drive that was right outside my office and now we have a drive right outside of our offices. For most of my life, my sister has been chronically ill and too many times critically so. Receiving the gift of blood is just one of the many intercessions that we've experienced over the last 30 years. And I venture to say that most of us in this room have a loved one who has also received this gift. Not all of us are medically eligible to give and there may come a day when I'm not but for now, while I can, I will. 
You should know that the American Red Cross currently has a critical shortage of type O blood and urgently needs blood donors of all types. Right now, they have less than a three-day supply of both O negative and O positive blood types. In January, because of severe weather and seasonal illnesses, it's difficult for the Red Cross to maintain a sufficient blood supply. While we are having our wonderfully mild temperatures here, it is an excellent time for us to walk outside and climb aboard the blood mobile. So I would appreciate it if you all would take some time out of your day to make this amazing gift of life. Thank you. I yield the well. <laughs> Chair recognizes Representative Kendrick for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, colleagues. I am bringing your black fact for today. So today, I would like to honor our 44th President of the United States from 2019 to 2017, President Barack Hussein Obama. He was the first African-American president elected to the, in, the United in the United States, and he was regarded as a centrist new de Democrat, but he, decide, he signed many landmark bills into law during his first years in office. This includes the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act, and repeal of the Don't Ask, Don't Tell in 2010. In foreign policy, he increased the U.S. troop levels in Afghanistan, reduced nuclear weapons with the United States-Russia New START Treaty, and ended military involvement in the Iraq War. He ordered military involvement in Libya, contributing to the overthrow of Gaddafi. He also ordered the military operations that resulted in the deaths of, Hus of Osama bin Laden and suspected al-Qaeda operative Awalaki. A 2018 Gallup poll found Obama to be one of the most admired uh, men in America for the 11th consecutive year. And in the words of the great philosopher Jay-Z, Martin Luther King marched so, Coretta, so that um, Rosa, Parks could sit, Rosa Parks sat so that Barack, Ob Barack Obama could fly, and Barack Obama flew so that I could be here today. That is your black fact for today, and thank you very much. Chair recognizes Representatives Bennett, Hughley, and Kendrick for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning. On this day, January 15, 1908, the illustrious Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated was founded. And today, our sisterhood is on full display for the world. Our 112-year enduring le legacy of supreme sisterhood and impactful service is on display for all to see. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated is an international service organization that was founded on the campus of Howard University in Washington, D.C. is the oldest Greek letter organization established by African American college educated women with nearly 300,000 members, over 1,000 graduate and undergraduate chapters throughout the international and United States. A wise African proverb says, as long as the names of our ancestors are called, they will live on in our hearts. And now I'd like to call the names of the 16 founders. Ethel Hedgeman Lyle, Margaret Flagg Holmes, Marjorie Hill, Lily E. Burke, Euler Elizabeth Burke, Anna Esther Brown, Lavina Norman, Lucy Diggs Slow, Mary Woodfolk Taylor, Joanna Berry Shields, Norma Elizabeth Boyle, Boyd, Ethel Jones Ma Mave, Sarah Mera Meriwether Nutter, Alice Porter Murray, Carrie E. Snowden, and Harriet Josephine Taylor. Excuse me, Terry. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and we yield the well. Chair recognizes Representative Stovall for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the House, it, it could have been me. Maternal mortality is a big issue in Georgia, especially among African-American women 
who are three to four times likely to die than any other race from pregnancy-related issues. We heard from experts after experts in the Mortality House Study Committee. When Georgia saw that meth and opioid were addictions of issues that, need to, that require specific remedies, we made those recommendations. Now that maternal mortality among African American women, we see it's an epidemic and it needs to be addressed. It could have been our sisters and has been our sisters, our daughters, our cousins, and our friends. The mortality specific, uh, mortality house committee study recommendations did not specifically mention issues that are specifically re related to African American women that could be reduced and helped to eliminate when there's a greater focus in Georgia on why African American women are dying at higher rate and that solutions can be given, especially when 60% of those deaths can be prevented. And the correspondence has, had been sent to the, to the committee members in reference to this. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, I, we yield the well. Chair recognizes Representative Kennard for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Jimmy Metters is scheduled to be executed by lethal injection tomorrow in Jackson, Georgia at the state prison. If Jimmy Metters would be tried today, this would not be a capital case for the state no longer seeks the death penalty for the crime of which Mr. Metters was convicted in 1989. Just 20 minutes into its deliberations in 89, Mr. Metter's jury sent a note to the judge asking if they could impose a sentence of life without parole. Unfortunately, life without parole was not yet available in Georgia. Their only option was the death penalty. The Southern Center for Human Rights is representing Mr. Metter's and has spoken with every living juror from his trial, and they all confirmed that life without parole would have been their verdict had they been given the option to impose it. And every single one of his surviving jurors support his clemency. His clemency hearing is today uh, before pardons and paroles. Southern Center further asserts that Mr. Meadows could not be clear, could be cleared of the crime through DNA testing of the murder weapon because DNA testing that was not available in 1989. Unfortunately, a Glenn County judge denied this request. A couple of observations. The death penalty in this nation is flawed and is defined by bias and error. The Equal Justice Institute, founded by Brian Stevenson, reports that for every nine people executed, one person on death row is exonerated. One in nine, an astonishing rate of error when you're talking about life and death. In his book, Just Mercy, Brian Stevenson writes, mercy is not something we give to people because they deserve it. Compassion is not what we give because it is owed. It's what we do because it's the way that we find mercy for ourselves. Christ said it this way, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Dale Washburn to introduce the Doctor of the Day. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, it is uh, my pleasure and privilege to introduce Dr. Raina Muna, who is our Doctor of the Day. Dr. Muna began medical school at the age of 45 at Mercer University School of Medicine in Macon. <coughs> she then completed her internal medicine residency at the Atlanta Medical Center, became board certified, and began her private practice in Macon. Dr. Muna was president of the Bibb County Medical Society in 2013 and serves as a delegate annually to the AMA House of Delegates. She is on the faculty at Mercer University School of Medicine 
and routinely mentors medical students there. Uh, one of the things that Dr. Mooner, with everything she has accomplished, and I'm departing from the script for a moment, uh, one of the things she is proudest of, understandably, is her son Christian, uh, who is in special forces and who has been deployed to Afghanistan on three occasions. He is now in special forces, as I mentioned. Dr. Moon is married to Joseph Egloff, a cattle farmer who owns a rocking chair ranch in Monroe County, and he is with us today. He provides grass-fed beef to several Georgia residents and local markets. Dr. Muna has served us as Doctor of the Day faithfully over the years. I asked her a few minutes ago, I said, Doctor, how many times have you done this? And she said, well, I can't really remember, but at least eight times. And so it's my pleasure today uh, to introduce to you Dr. Raina Moon, our Doctor of the Day. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Um, this is a huge pleasure for me to be here to serve you today on behalf of Bibb County Medical Society. We understand that this is a sacrifice for you and you're being selfless. We know you don't get paid a lot to do this and it's hard, you're away from your families, you're away from your homes. I just wanna tell you that one of, one of the great things that Dale Washburn did when he ran for office, he came and sat with us at the Bibb County Med Society board meeting one morning and just gave us a chance to pick his brain. And it was a great day. We learned about him. We felt like he would represent us very well. He, we, we went out as new advocates of his and look, look here he is. So use your medical societies and let them pick your brain once in a while. They love to have you come sit with them. I look forward to taking care of you today. If you're sick, great. If you're not sick and you have a medical question, just come and ask me. I love to talk about medicine. Thank you for allowing me to serve you. The members of the House, please find your seats. We have a uh, very special recognition. The clerk will read the caption to House Resolution 886. House Resolution 886 by Representative Green, the 151st, Ralston, the 7th, Chokas, the 138th, Nixon, the 69th, and Harold, the 106th. A resolution recognizing com and commending Karen and Eric Bonk of Richland Distilling Company and for other purposes. Chairman Green was kind enough to let me say a word or two um, about these friends of mine. You know, we have talked a lot in this house over the last few years about rural development and bringing jobs to rural Georgia. Well, let me tell you something. If you have never been to the Richland Rum Distillery in Richland, Georgia, you are in for a treat. Um, Eric uh, Vonk and uh, um, Karen uh, have brought that business. I was there many years ago when it, they were, hadn't been off the ground very long, and it is a class organization, and uh, I understand that they are now in the top tier of sales all over the world. And it's rum made here in Georgia by Georgians, putting Georgians to work. <laughs> and let me say one more thing. It, that rum makes a fantastic rum cake, <laughs> or so I'm told. <laughs> Chair recognizes Chairman Gerald Green for an invite resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. He knows what he speaks of. 
Many years ago, I was called to Richland, Georgia, and they wanted me to come and meet some individuals. And they carried me to two burned out warehouses right there on Broad Street, horrible looking buildings. And they said, we want to build a rum distillery here. I thought, my gosh, that's impossible. Well, I want you to know it's not impossible. For those two individuals right behind me, Eric Vonk and his wife Karen, they are the hardest working individuals to bring about some revitalization to downtown Richland, Georgia. And now they are in uh, Brunswick, Georgia. And so be careful if you are uh, wanting a a place, they'll be there too, but we're not going to lose them in Richland, Georgia. And I'm not going to take up much time. I want you to hear from this individual, Eric Bonk, please. Mr. Speaker, um, Representative uh, Green, um, it's uh, kind of hard to find words that adequately describe the gratitude that uh, Karen and I feel for the opportunity to uh, be here. And frankly, we believe, honestly, that the gratitude should be all ours. Um, the uh, Georgia, we have learned to know Georgia through an initiative by then Commissioner of Industry and Trade, Randy Cardoza, in 1991, to as the best <coughs> state to do business in, in the union. It is absolutely true. The proactive government support that exists here does not exist anywhere else. And with your leadership, Mr. Speaker, and with efforts like yours, uh, Gerald, and Alan Powell on the Regulated Industries Committee, it is we would not be able to have built this business, which now distributes Richland rum made in Georgia in 15 states and exports it to 11 countries. As business, as entrepreneurs, we have registered two trademarks. One is Georgia's spirit, and the other one is the spirit of Georgia. Georgia's spirit is Richland rum. Its only ingredients are homegrown sugarcane and water from the Georgia aquifer. The spirit of Georgia is what lives in the company, its people, and the state, which is home to the company. It's the spirit of Georgia that has developed us and is now helping us to export the best spirit thinkable to mankind. Thank you so much for everything you've done over the years to make this possible. Thank you. I'm sorry, Representative Williams. Um, for what purpose do you rise? Parliamentary State inquiry. State your inquiry. Before they leave, I'm certain that there are samples in the ante room so we can get into the spirit of Georgia. <laughs> I'm going to let you take that up with Chairman Green over here. But I am uh, sure if he's done his homework, he had him bring some. Clerk will read the caption to a group of privileged resolutions. Organizing, commending Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church on the grand occasion of its 150th anniversary. 
Honoring and commending the individual member organizations and their staff as members of Service Providers Association for Developmental Disabilities and celebrating their day at the Capitol on January 16th, 2020. Commending and congratulating William Thomas Roby. Recognizing January 28th, 2020 is Georgia Speech Language Hearing Association Day at the State Capitol. Commending and congratulating Sheriff Cullen Talton. Commending Dr. Kimberly Duger, Clayton County Public Schools 2019-2020 Principal of the Year. Commending Annette McCraw, Clayton County Public Schools 2019-2020 Support Professional of the Year Certified. Commending Dr. Shakira Cheney, Clayton County Public Schools 2019-2020 Support Leader of the Year Certified. Commending Marcus Holston, Clayton County Public Schools, 2019-2020 Support Professional of the Year Classified. Commending Kim Blackwood, Clayton County Public Schools, 2019-2020 Support Professional of the Year Classified. Congratulating and commending the Georgia Beekeepers Association on the occasion of its 100th anniversary. Inviting the Savannah Children's Choir to be designated as junior ambassadors from the state of Georgia to the People's Republic of China. Commending and recognizing CEO John Long for his effort in establishing the Georgia Radio Museum and Hall of Fame. And for other purposes, that completes the reading of the privilege resolutions. Is there any objection to adopting the privilege resolutions? The chair hears none and the resolutions are adopted. We have no birthdays today. We do have a number of announcements. Chair recognizes Chairman Beverly, Chair of the Minority Caucus. Good morning, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Georgia House Democratic Caucus will meet tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. in room 216, breakfast will be served. All Georgia Democratic House Caucus members, please be there. We will start at 8.30. Promptly, I'll get you guys out of there by 9.15. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes the chair of the Industry and Labor Committee, Chairman Workheiser, for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The House Industry and Labor uh, Committee will meet today at 3 o'clock at CLOB 506. Thank you, Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Buckner for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Rural Caucus will be meeting for its first meeting of the session today at noon. It will be in room 201 of the Department of Agriculture. So Rural Caucus at noon, come join us, have a good lunch and a good program. Chair recognizes Chairman Corbett for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to invite everybody down to the depot this afternoon, 5 to 8 p.m., the Okefenokee occasion. Come on down, uh, friends, food, and fellowship. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes the chair of the Agriculture and Consumer Affairs Committee, Chairman McCall, for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Y'all should have gotten an invitation. It's a whole laundry list of uh, 
associations that we use every day from builders, electrical contractors, to China clay, to plumbers, to op ophthalmologists. Uh, having a reception from 4.30 to 7 tonight at the Commerce Club, which used to be the 191. You're all welcome. Thank you. Chair's understanding is that a former member of this body, former Representative Deborah Gonzalez, is on the floor. Oh, I see her. Okay. Chair recognizes Chairman Martin for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The House Higher Education Committee will meet in the CLOB 606 at 1 p.m. today. 1 p.m. CLOB 606. We'll have a presentation from the University System and the Professional Standards Commission. Thank you. Chair recognizes Chairman Heath Clark for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, members of the House Defense and Veterans Affairs Committee, we are having um, a meeting today at 2 o'clock in CLOB 415. 2 o'clock, 415. Chair recognizes Chairman Green for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. State Properties Committee members, we will be meeting today at 2 p.m. in room 403 of the State Capitol. We have one bill, uh, one resolution to take up today, and so please make uh, plans to attend. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes the Chairman of the House Rules Committee Chairman Richard Smith for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The House Rules Committee will meet tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock in 341. Uh, we'll have a supplemental calendar. Thank you all. That completes our announcements. That completes our announcements. The chair recognizes the majority leader of the House for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And by the way, marvelous job this morning, your comments and eggs and issues with the chamber. Thank you for those remarks. Mr. Speaker, I move that this House stand in recess until 4 p.m. today and then be adjourned until 10 a.m. Thursday, January the 15th, 2020. Majority Leader has moved that this House will be in recess until 4 o'clock p.m. today at which time we would stand adjourned until Thursday, January 16 at 10 a.m. All those in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed will say no. The ayes have it, and this House will be in recess until 4 o'clock p.m. today, whereupon we will then be adjourned until tomorrow morning at 10 a.m.